different. So we've seen that metals plus nonmetals have a tendency to form ionic bonds, right? Metals lose electrons, become positive ions, nonmetals gain electrons to form negative ions, and the positive and the negative ions are attracted to each other. Nonmetals amongst themselves can form covalent bond, which is sharing of electrons. Now, you do need to know that metals may form covalent bonds also, okay, with other atoms. For example, the most common one you'll encounter, mercury-1, that's actually a pair of mercury atoms with a charge of plus two. The mercury atoms there are actually sharing electrons. Same thing with the chromate ion. That's a, that's a polyatomic ion. Its formula is CrO4 negative two. Chromium is a metal, oxygen is a nonmetal. There's a covalent bond between the chromium and the oxygen. Same thing with dichromate ion, Cr2O7 with a negative two charge. The permanganate ion, manganese is a metal, oxygen is a nonmetal. You have a covalent bond between them. This uh, formula right here represents a copper, okay, metal ion forming a covalent bond with water molecules, four water molecules, okay? So each of those water molecules is actually sharing a lone pair of like instead of having that two lone pairs, one of the lone pairs on the water molecule is actually shared with the copper. So you got four of those around the copper. That's called a complex ion. So this is called a coordination complex. So uh, an entire subfield of chemistry, okay, known as organo coordination chemistry or organometallic chemistry deals with these types of bonding where metals actually form covalent bonds, okay? Now, what if all you have are, are metals? No, no, no. Well, in the metallic solids, the electrons, we say, are if all you have are metal atoms, then the electrons would be loosely held because, remember, metals give up their electrons easily. Okay, and that sort of explains why metals are good electrical conductors. Okay, so you could imagine just the, the nuclei of the, the atoms, if they're all metals, they can, you can imagine them as just buried in a sea of electrons. Okay, so that... So you have the bonding among a large number of metal atoms. So you have a whole bunch of metal atoms right next to each other, electrons floating around them more or less freely. Uh, electrons are readily able to move. So what's holding those metals together would be what you would call metallic bonding. Okay, so that's the bonding that occurs when you have a large number of metal atoms uh, with electrons just loosely held among them.